You've got to be careful what kind of shears they are, whether they're forged or the cast. And you can't always tell. Um, I've asked different manufacturers and different people. I don't know if you know any secret ways of knowing cast and forged. Um, Casper gave me, you can ask him to mar his story. I, I might not take that away from him, but he has this thing about you can taste it or smell it or something, and then he starts laughing. And um, then I talked to uh, the guy with Hanako scissors, and he yeah, said he, he said way. something. Yeah, he said something in Korean. He doesn't speak English. He said something in Korean, and his wife started laughing. And I said, "Okay, translate." And she said, "He said that if you bend it and it breaks, it's cast. If it doesn't, it's forged." <laughs> That's the definitive cast. <laughs> and then um, I told uh, you know Dennis I liked what he was talking about um, yesterday in his class. His class yesterday was awesome. So if next year. Uh, we're planning on having that class at their sharpeners jam so people have time to take the class and practice what you taught them and maybe have it here too. But his class was excellent and he was talking about how far to bend a pair of shears and he says bend it and stop just before it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't break any shears in the class yesterday, right? No, none were broken. But. Um, you got to know when to bend and when not to bend. We do have a video from our Sharpener's Jam, when to bend and when not to bend from Casper. He doesn't necessarily go into showing you how to bend. He just talks about when to bend and when not to bend. So we've got a special where we do have another video on how to bend that we are coupling with it. But uh, bending is something I've stayed away from. But if you're going to do the certification and be a master, you've got to let, know that. Before you go right. on, uh, just yes. let point out that at the factory, the person who does this, as long as they break less than 3% of the shears when they do this, they're happy with them. So the person who does this all day long, and that's all they do, they have a 3% breakage rate. It's actually 2 to 3%, but uh, yeah. So even, you know, don't feel too bad if you break something, because even the guy who does, that's all he does for a living, I mean, he breaks them too. Yeah, some of our practice shears, yeah, do you have a comment on that? Oh, just a question, when you say bending, you mean setting it? Setting it. Setting, yeah. Right, just like and it's different shirt. terms. It, it, uh, I think Dennis uses tweaking, which I like that. Tweaking, I like bending, tweaking, setting. bending, I setting. I tweaking for the cosmetologist. Mm -hmm. They don't yeah. like to know that I'm bending their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times when I'm talking to cosmetologists, um, and I know this is not the correct term, but I'll tell them your shears are warped. <laughs> and that I, you know, I need, you know. Need to tweak them. Uh, yeah. Um, so, but... That you're going to hammer it or you can bend them or whatever for the set. Do y'all hammer or, or We'll do both or? based on what's needed, but the first thing as we're teaching somebody, we give them a couple different shears and we tell them to break it. Take the hammer, hit it, and see what it takes to actually break the blade. When I learned that's what they had me do. So I, I <laughs> broke my, intentionally broke my fair set of shears and then accidentally broke a couple. I haven't broke too many, like I said, because I don't do that too much. Um, in fact, that Joel's the only one I can remember breaking. Um, the guy that did our video and, and taught a class on how to bend shears at our sharpener's jam a few years ago uh, worked with us in New York, and I think he broke three at the New York two, two at the IBS New York Hair Show, which is uh, so. <laughs> um, now I'm going to talk. He did hundred shears, so he was in his. <laughs> Um, I'm going to talk about the edge on the shears, and this was something, uh, like I told you, I'm a little intimidated when I'm up here with all these master sharpeners, and uh, and I was at the NBTSG, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, and they went around, Larry went around the room about what's the you know angle you normally sharpen shears at, and it was 45, 45, 45, everybody in the room was saying 45, and I said, well, I do a lot of them at 40. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it, it's kind of brave, <laughs> brave to say so, uh, from the factory I'm finding pretty much all the good quality shears are going to be a 45 degree angle or higher some of our shears are 50 our fishbone is 60 degrees um, by the way we're using those American angles not the um, not no not the Japanese, Japanese ones angles, which yeah. is the opposite um, and uh, the sharper their edge of course, easier it is to slide cut, but the faster they go dull. The blunter the edge, the stronger the edge. So you you want to, I, I customize the edge on the shears when I sharpen them to my customer. If I know they're not slide cutting, if I know they're working at one of those salons where a lot of times the hair is not washed, 
and they're just doing straight cutting and they're going to judge my sharpening by how long the shears go between sharpening, I'll do it at a 40 degree angle. Now I don't, I don't usually go lower than a 40 degree angle on a convex edge because if you go lower than that it starts pushing the hair. Did you, uh, yes, you look like you want to make a comment there. So. Uh, no, but in many of that, you have to not only look at the, at the stylus, you have to look at the shear and what you're yeah. made at. Exactly, if it's, exactly. If it's VG10 or ATS 314, you could put a, a 50 on You are exactly, that's the, that's the next thing. 420, yes. you got to put a 40 on And there's some of the shears that um, I'll sharpen that someone will give me that might have come from the factory at a 45 degree angle, but a 45 is not going to hold up on that shear. Okay. They put that angle on it, or I've seen some of them 50 degree angle. They put that shear yeah. on it in order to sell it. The hair shows so that be nice they, and sharp. First time they use it, they're, oh, it, wonderful. It, yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's, there, and so there's, you know, a lot of the shears, when I go back to sharpen it, because of the quality, I, I yeah. have to change the angle on it, but, yeah. According to Uwe, there Uba. is Uba. There's something magic about the 45 because supposedly that's when the force vector changes from push to cut. Yeah, yeah, and it is, so it is, it is. A lot it of is, sharpeners, uh, a lot of good sharpeners will try to always exceed 45 by, in other words, to set their clamp halfway between 45 and 50 and get that 47, 48, which you can tell the difference. It works better. If it's a good metal. If it's a good metal. If it's a good metal. So. But I, and what I do is I write on my receipt and on my records what angle I sharpen that shear at. So when I go back in and they say, hey, I, you know, they were happy with it, I know what angle, I don't have to stop and think, because I, I use a clamp, I don't freehand. Now this is hard to do if you're freehanding. That's one of the reasons I advocate using a clamp, one of the many reasons. But um, if, you're, um, if they say, hey, those shears seem to go dull real fast, I'll say, well, do you um, slide cut? Well, no, not, not very much. Well, then, and that you can slide cut with a 40, it's just not going to slide cut as well. Um, I, and then I might tweak, I'm, that's where I use my word tweak, and I might tweak and change the angle up or down depending on what they want. Or they say, can you make it a little sharper this time? Well, then I know I did it 40, I might want to do it 45. But I keep up with that. And, and it's like I said, it's the two things. It's a stylus, number one, how they're using the shears, and number two, it's the quality of the shear. And once again, we go back to what we talked about at the beginning. You can't tell by what it says. Just because it says Japan and Cobalt on the back of the shear doesn't mean it's Japan and Cobalt. And there's a lot of these new dry cut shears that come from the factory at 55 or even better. Yeah, as I said, our uh, fishbone, which you use as a razor and a shear, it needs to be 60 or you can't razor with it. But it's a hard enough Cobalt, it's, it's, it holds it pretty good. Um, my last two slides I have here is this is slide cutting with a shear with a 35 degree angle. Can you see the, the, what the ends of the hair looks like here? If someone has a dull pair of shears, they're going to get split ends. Um, from their, 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 um, their customer is going to get split ends because their scissors don't have a sharp angle to them. And then this is slide cutting the same type of hair with a shear that's been sharpened at 45 degrees. And you can see there, there's a little bit, where's my arrow here, there's a little bit of thinning here at the end where we did slide cutting, but it's, it's a little bit more of a blunt and you don't have that frizzing and the split ends that you would have with a duller shear. So that's something to tell your clients. If they're, going, they're, they're trying to go too long without having their shears sharp and they're, and they're slide cutting or they're buying cheaper scissors, they're actually giving their customers split ends and frizzy hair. I don't think they teach. Uh, I know at the schools in my area, they don't teach anything about the, the scissors that they need for slide cutting. I had a lady last Thursday that worked that she said their shears doesn't slide cut very well. So I looked at them and they were a prom blazer with corrugation on them. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, these won't slide, slide cut, honey. I said, you're not going to get any slide cut on these. I said, well, I wonder about that. And uh, I, I showed her what shear to you. And, you know, uh, I said, you need a convex to move that shear. Now, I don't want to be talking over anybody's head. Does everybody know what we mean when we say slide cutting? <clears throat> Um, they're, they're opening the shears and slide. Now, do I don't do a lot of groomers. Do groomers do any slide cutting? No, no. Typically, when I sharpen a groomer shear, 
I will do it at a 40 degree angle. I won't do it at 45 because I figure they're not slide cutting and they're, the scissors are falling on the floor, but I may be wrong. I don't, I mean, my specialty is a beauty shears. So those of you do groomers, what angle do you normally do them at? Or? I, I do 45 do you? on a convex edge. Shear. On a convex edge shear for the groomers? Well, I simply do that because uh, even though, I, and I warn my uh, customers that the edge is going to be more fragile, but you're going to have a lot less hair push. Okay. Like so that's, that's what I tell them. Everybody seems to be fine with that. And I think it's. I think if you can, if you're not interrupting the stylist or the groomer, um, consult with them and tell them I can put. I have a choice here on the angle, and that's impressive to them. Um, that you can customize the angle to them. Is it more? You know, which is more important to you? You know, to go a little longer between sharpening, or you know, to, to have that the where you have less effort in cutting and less push of the hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, any questions about any of this? I think that's the, uh, yeah, the methods of sharpening may vary. You might have different ways of getting there, but you've got to have these basics. Any questions about anything I covered? I didn't really get into how to do this, but I, um, that that's for what we're going to, in the afternoon, we're going to have centers set up here where you're going to actually be able to sit and, and go and see some people sharpen. Yes? I have a comment on that picture. Three. Get the one back, before? The, the slide, the comparison between the... Yeah, I was, what I was planning on doing, he's videotaping this. What I'm planning on doing is maybe putting this on what I just talked about on YouTube rather than a video, but I can also put it on where you can get those pictures because that well, was... Years ago, I seen a picture where someone cut with like like a, a corrugated shear or whatever where it's actually catching the hair and then it's just like cutting it off. That's actually crushing the hair a little bit as it cuts as compared to the, uh, something with a, a, I'm going to say sharper angle, you know, the, the, right. where it slices through the hair. And it, it, so I've been telling these people, that was years ago I seen it, so I tell them, I said, you know, you're actually doing the, the frizzy end stuff with your, with the people's hair by using a, a scissor, a cheaper scissor, or, or just having it done with, on a brine center type thing. Because um, I have some uh, guys who use brine centers for like their dog grooming, then they go into the salons, and it, I mean, it cuts hair. Yeah. It definitely yeah. cuts hair, but you're damaging that end of that hair. You're kind of pinching it instead of yeah, cutting yeah, it. Yeah, pinching it. Yeah, yeah. And this was as close of, uh, good this was as close yeah. as I could get the picture, but I know when I've talked to other, uh, the, some of the manufacturers and they, they, they talk about the difference between a razor, which is like an angle, and then the shear where it cuts, it's, 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 it's a pinch and pinch type of thing. So yeah, it's a, it's a little different. Yeah, so the way the hair hair is made. If you're in a higher end salon, and you tell them <laughs> you're explaining it to them, you know, it's going to help them help hold down that split ends. Yeah, because some that. some of their clients may go somewhere else. I said for some reason, every time I go to the salon, my hair looks frizzy and I get split ends. When I go to this other salon, I don't know if the shampoo. They may not understand why, but you know, they, they when I go to this other salon, my hair doesn't the haircut doesn't look as frizzy. So they may be losing clients and not even realize it because they've got the wrong shears and they're cutting wrong. And we have to educate them. As, as, as Dennis was saying, the schools rarely educate them on that. So, and that, but that's a great opportunity for us to go into the schools. I think Gene's going to address a little bit of that with his talk. Anything, any other comments or questions about anything?